Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the word reattachment. It gets used quite a lot, and I think it gets mis misused. Um, so we're talking about a child or a person who has had a tongue tie, and they've had a phrenectomy uh, to release the tongue tie. So when you have a tongue tie, we know that those fibers that are restricting the tongue function and movement are embryonic fibers, and those fibers have 3% out of 100% stretch, which means basically they don't stretch. There are great research um, studies out there that have followed babies from birth and on to show that they don't move or migrate or change, so you're not gonna outgrow a tongue tie. If you have a tongue tie, you have a tongue tie. Um, so when that tongue tie is treated, what I see when someone comes to me and has had a tongue tie treatment, um, had a phrenectomy, and now they're saying, oh, my, my kid has reattachment, can you do another surgery? So, what I like families to know about is one of two things have happened. Number one thing, which is very common, is whenever the baby was diagnosed or the person was diagnosed with a tongue tie, it was probably an anterior tie because those have been diagnosed um, pretty well over the years. And so providers, ENTs and pediatric surgeons and even pediatric dentists, um, really have been trained in the past just to get the anterior part, that little thin skin in the front and clip that. There's hardly any bleeding when that happens. There's no diamond that opens up, so you're just getting the front part of the phrenectomy, so, or the front part of the frenum. Um, and so there are still some of those embryonic fibers left in the middle and back part, so the patient is basically still tongue-tied. You've just freed the most restricted anterior portion, and you will see improvement oftentimes with breastfeeding and feeding when you release that part. Not always, but a lot of times that will improve symptoms, and so I'll see a kid that's tongue-tied later, and it, it just turns out that they really didn't have a complete um, phrenectomy the first time. So that's one thing that can happen. But the second thing that can also happen, and it's really important to differentiate which of these two things has happened, is poor wound healing. So either an incomplete release or poor wound healing. And I want to talk about that a little bit. So when you remove those embryonic fibers, they cannot reattach. That doesn't happen. But what does happen is that everyone is going to have a frenum, which is an attachment from the tongue to the mandible. So your tongue should be attached to the man mandible, and it should limit the motion of the mandible so it doesn't gape open or move excessively to different sides. So that's, that's what a frenum does, is it limits motion. Um, and it connects us, so you're going to get a new frenum. What's important after a phrenectomy is that the healing is such that the right collagen fibers, the right amount of elastin, have filled in to create a beautiful new frenum that's inserting in a healthy place and has a great range of motion and function. So those are the things that you need to see. So you'll have a new frenum, and in the early stages of contraction, in the first 21 days, you'll often see things tighten up a little bit and look and act like a tongue tie again. But if you're working with a provider um, to do good post-operative care, good retraining of tongue function, you're gonna tell the body by what aftercare exercises and physical therapy you, you make the tongue do, what length of frenum you need, what kind of function and range of motion, and what kind of collagen and elastin to put in there. So poor healing is actually what people are really referring to a lot of times when they've had a complete phrenectomy, so they have a pre-picture and a post-picture, and it looks great, and you should always get your own pre and post-picture taken and given to you. Um, we give those to our patients for their medical records, so they can always know that, yes, this was a complete release. Um, so when you have that picture and you know you've had a, a complete release, and now you're looking at something that looks like a tongue tie again, it's tight and it's restricting motion and it's short, that's poor wound healing. And what's important to know about that is you don't wanna do a surgery in an area where a child or a person's had poor wound healing without finding out why they've had poor wound healing. And the reason for that is that if you jump in and do another surgery, you're almost always gonna get the same type of healing or even worse, scar tissue formation. So if you find out why they got that type of healing, that poor wound healing, and you address those issues, you can actually get remodeling of the area um, such that you don't need another surgery and it functions the way it's supposed to. An example I have of that in my own life is I had this wonderful home birth planned for my daughter and ended up in an emergency C-section. In the last part of my pregnancy, I had a lot of inflammation in my body. I had high blood pressure. I wasn't doing things I knew that I should be doing. 
Um, and so I ended up with a very large keloid scar, which is abnormal wound healing. So um, about 16 months after my daughter was born, my body started going back to its normal shape and size and the inflammation was gone and just I was in a much healthier place. And my keloid scar remodeled on its own without me exercising or putting Mederma or anything else on it. It just went back to looking like the skin around it. So that's 16 months after the surgery, but my body remodeled. So when you have good form and function and you've had a complete release, the body should put the right type of tissue there and replace it with what needs to be there. When it doesn't, there's a reason and you need to find out that reason and don't even consider another surgery until you've addressed that. So I'm not going to go too, into great detail right here in this video, but the following up with that usually means working with a functional medicine doctor to identify if there's systemic inflammation, which is attacking that side and creating more scar-like or poor wound healing. If there are methylation issues, which a lot of times tongue-tied people do have what we call methylation issues, so you gotta address the infl infl inflammation before you address the methylation. So that would be where a functional medicine doctor would come in and sometimes just addressing those things are gonna make things a lot better. And then the other thing is, is the palate still high? Does the tongue have room to go where it needs to go? And does this patient need myofunctional therapy and possibly myofascial or sort of trigger point release in the mouth? Really is age dependent, depending on what we're seeing in the mouth. There's a lot of things that we do. I never jump in and do a surgery on a person that comes to me and I don't know what the answer is. Was it an incomplete? or a poor, uh, poor release, or was it poor wound healing? What we do is say, well, let's go ahead and do these couple of things first. Let's meet with the osteopath to make sure there's no things going on in the rest of the body pulling and creating this tension. Let's meet with a functional medicine doctor to see if there's some inflammation or, or methylation issues. Um, or let's work with our myofunctional therapist to get in there and work inside the mouth and get the, um, the person doing some exercises and functional things to get the tongue to remodel on its own. So those things, it can't just give you a generic formula because it really depends on what we see in the mouth and what the um, context is in the whole person's um, situation. Um, but those are kind of the three areas that we look at. And if we work those things out and get green lights in all of those areas, then it very well may be that there was an incomplete release and they need a complete release, but you're never gonna go wrong um, checking into those things and addressing those things are very minimally invasive and give you lots of good information anyway. So that's my spiel on uh, reattachment. Hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call our office 281-394-7040. Thank you so much.